The Buck 110 is a classic, but heavy. So we take a look at some lightweight versions. I get the Kaiser Mystic and a large folder update. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Had a couple of comments I liked this week. Well, I had a lot of comments, but two of my favorites were the first one. I thought I was watching Randy. You guys sound the same. This is from Sergeb1717 on the Pioneer Jack review. And uh, he mistook me for Randy Johnson, a, a longtime YouTuber who went fallow for a, a little while and then came back of a year or so ago. I've always loved his videos, especially on... Um, on slip joints he's got an amazing collection and a great insight i think it's funny that that uh i sound like him um uh, but to me that's a compliment so thanks very much sir sir geb next up on my collins machete close-up video collins machete hangs up behind me on the wall here it's this one my brother gave me it's a world war ii uh, engineer's machete it's as heavy as the day is long a stronger breed of men carried those that's for sure uh Case number zero zero says, I found this in my grandfather's stuff 13 years ago. Sheath is barely holding in there and the handle scales each half gone. Been meaning to at least restore the scales on the, ha uh, on the handles. Well, case number uh, zero zero, I think that's really cool for a couple of reasons. First of all, the, uh, the idea of finding something that was so intimately linked to your grandfather's wartime experience uh, as a as a tool that he probably used on the daily is pretty amazing, and um, and then the thought of restoring I like restoring old uh, knives and swords like the ones I I've done on the wall behind me, and the idea of taking something that has a real uh, sentimental meaning to it and and fixing it is is great. I would caution you though, <clears throat> as someone who has botched many a job if this is something that's really important uh be very honest about your abilities <laughs> and uh if if you're not up to it send it to someone who who can do it for you and get that collins machete um at least something that you can hold again um by the handle thank you very much case number zero zero for that comment i thought it was uh really compelling and thanks to everyone who watches and comments it's greatly appreciated that said time to get to a pocket check Front right pocket today was the beautiful and venerable Model 2 from American Blade Works. Uh, this is the a titanium, um, a titanium liner lock. I'm sorry, I kept wanting to say frame lock. Titanium liner lock that just works so beautifully. And something you notice, a subtle, uh, a subtle touch that you notice right away upon closing this knife is the detent ramp that uh, Michael Martin put on the tang of the blade so that there's no, uh, as Metal Complex calls it, double clutch, where you're closing it and then the blade stops because it hits the detent ball and then you have to get over that detent ball to make it close. Uh, he has a full-on ramp in there and it just glides shut. Beautifully done. This, is, this was my very first Magna Cut steel blade. This was a gift from Michael uh, and... Uh, Michael Martin of American Blade Works, and so greatly appreciated. Uh, he let me walk from Blade Show with this. Oh, check it out. Take it with you. And I, it wasn't long until I was asking him how much I owed him because I didn't want to send it back. So um, this this knife, I've, I've commented many times on how beautiful it is closed and that it also gives off an Art Deco vibe to me. So, um, But anyway, I was talking about that Magna Cut blade. Super sharp, so fine behind the edge so uh just incredibly keen and when i when i got this i couldn't help but think like wow magna cut cuts really well and i had to i had to bring myself back from the brink and say wait a second michael martin makes magna cut cut really well um so he's got he's got a it heat treat up to 64 i think 63 64 which is its prime spot and um, he's got the build process down. This thing uh, is a dream. And it's all made by a one-man band um, in North Carolina. So I'm 
it's an impressive knife and it's really nice to have in pocket because you know that it's an American made tool and it's got style. It's beautiful. All right. Next up, uh, we were talking about this before, uh, during the comment section today, I was carrying my Jack Wolf knives, pioneer Jack. Of course, there it is. And it's beautiful slip. I love these leather slips. They send, um, man, if they didn't, I would be all over the website getting the other cool stuff that they uh that they sell there they have a lot of aftermarket slips you can buy and uh, this one is the ultim covered pioneer jack let's get that in focus the pioneer jack is based on the classic single bladed uh farmer's jack or uh case calls it the sod buster gec calls it the bull nose or the bull buster uh i think that blade style is known as is known sorry as the bull buster or bull nose style straight back farmer's jack knife um and then and then the different companies take on their proprietary names this to me like kleenex is a sod buster um i think at this point it's become sort of a ubiquitous name for this style knife this is a different than the other jack wolf knives it's got a slightly uh thicker um grind and to me it feels like it 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 is very thin here and then it gets thicker towards the front i'm not sure if that's the case in terms of uh, caliper measurements but uh, anecdotally my fingers feel it uh, and then you can see how stout that tip is all the way down the spine of the blade right to the tip unlike all the other uh, jack wolf knives that uh taper in very, very extremely towards the tip. You know, they have very fine tips. Uh, so this is a robust uh, work style knife, uh, very apropos to the design style, you know, uh, like farmers would have this in their pocket, busting sod all day long. So I don't know what that means. I think maybe that means cutting grass. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I did not use it to, to bust any sod today. I used this to... Uh, Cut. I'm, I'm into baguettes these days. You know, for a long time I talked about how they cut bagels. Well, now I'm getting baguettes. There, there's a grocery store in this part of the world called Wegmans that has just the best bakery, and they make really good baguettes. I'll get one. It'll last me two days at work. Uh, this is what I've been <laughs> using this for primarily. What can I say? I'm not a sod buster myself. I'm more of a a bread buster, and this thing does a great job. I love the uh, Ultim, the color of the Ultim next to the blasted gray titanium. I think that's really really uh fetching the 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 totally clear ultim here the totally transparent ultim looks good on a totally filled in titanium frame backing as far as i'm concerned as soon as you start adding in weight relief and and all of the like inner workings of a knife unless it's an automatic out the front i don't want to see my ultim totally transparent but here it works okay uh on my belt uh my fixed blade today was the beautiful 302 from Aaron Bieber Knives. I like showing it in the sheath because it just, it looks cool. The whole package looks cool. Uh, one of the few knives I carry, fixed blade these days, still using that in the waistband uh, strap. However, I don't wear it in the waistband. Uh, it's riding scout style on the front. And uh, this knife is just, um, man, it really, it's firing on all cylinders for me because it's given you the utility of a Warncliffe with with the way that edge is oriented to the handle but it's actually a clip point and you've got a very deep hollow ground swedge on the top and you've got a a a slight belly on the blade but you get the benefits of a straight edge you get the benefits of that curve slight curve on the edge and a point down where a worn cliff would have the point so this this design is just is i love this design it's really uh light and unobtrusive to carry it just like it just hangs out on the belt until you need it uh the sukamaki wrap i think makes it a little bit lighter he also he also uh, uh aaron bieber also offers this knife in uh bone jig bone which is beautiful and then also in a in a um, g10 burl g10 uh, those all look great but to me it's all about this wrap he does a gorgeous job on the wrap uh, that's white ray skin under there, and then this epoxied lace uh, done in the traditional style. Just uh, the way it terminates up here at the, uh, the way it's knotted up here at the um, 
uh, pommel is just beautiful. And uh, the result of all of this beauty is that it feels great in hand. You get incredible grip with a Tsukamaki grab, uh, grip because you have that uh, those alternating peaks and valleys where your hands and your, your fingers and your fat of your palm just nestle in there. So great, great, great knife. I carry this uh, so that uh, if I'm going to draw it with my right hand, it's drawn in the reverse grip. And then last, um, for emotional support, a strange choice. Uh, one that you don't see me carry often uh, or talk about often. This one didn't even close this time. Uh, this is the Boker XL Kalashnikov uh, AK-74. Automat Kalashnikov 74. Uh, the AK-74 was a was a different caliber than the AK-47, right? And it has a slightly more modernized look. I don't know too much about the difference between those two rifles, uh, but I know a lot of times you see an AK-74 and you just think AK-47. Uh, so I get, I guess it got the update in mid-70s and still kicking butt to the, this day. But this knife is very much like the Kalashnikov rifle. Is a ju just a stalwart. This is one that's been going forever and ever for Boker. Uh, they've made it in a million different versions, and they've made like a billion different individual pieces that they've sent out. Um, so, like the AK, it, this this knife is out there changing the world just through sheer volume. Um, but this is the XL version, a five inch blade. This was sent to me by Lavender Pants. Uh, guy who used to hang out on this uh, channel on thursday night knives um very nice dude and uh yeah he just sent this to me i think his wife found it inappropriate to have around the young children they had at the time so he said oh i, I bet i know someone who will take it <laughs> and he found a home for it and i don't know what inspired me to carry this today uh i was just perusing the collection i saw it picked it up flipped it and i was like i never ever carry this or use this uh, so why not take it today? And I did have to tighten the pivot up. There's a bit of play in there. And when you tighten the pivot, it's it's kind of got a slow slapping uh, motion or action to it. But no matter, still a cool knife. And uh, it's got that great clip point. So I had a variety of, uh, of blade styles on me today. I had that sheep's foot. I had that uh, uh, flat back. I had whatever that is, a worn cliff clip point and a straight up clip point automatic what were you carrying in your pockets today let me know drop it in the comments below always find it interesting to see what uh, my classy classy customers are carrying and uh, let me get these out of the way and all of these modern folding uh locking knives had me thinking about the buck 110 i love the buck 110 never carry the buck 110 i keep a 112 right here on the desk and i keep a 110 up in my dresser. And I just want to talk about this because um, my good buddy, Kep McNesshart, sent me two different uh, versions of the 110, more modern versions of the 110 that I wanted to uh, contrast with the classic here. And I'm going to start this. I never do this. Oh, I never do this. But I'm going to show you with a scale here that some of the differences here. So we got our scale. Let's see. Can you see there? Yeah zero ounces okay so this is the classic buck 110 that's got the 420 hc steel uh does not say boss heat treat on this so i don't think i think this is just your run-of-the-mill walmart um buck 110 you've got the brass liners and bolsters and the the dura wood or whatever diamond wood there that's like composite wood let's see how much this sucker weighs so that is seven and one quarter let's see if i can do this seven and a quarter ounces now seven and a quarter ounces on say a hinderer xm24 with a clip um and a giant body is it feels lighter than seven and a quarter inches in something that doesn't have a clip that you definitely have to wear on the belt uh this i've tried dropping this in the pocket it's a disaster uh i did make a leather slip for it that keeps it oriented north to south but still it's a heavy customer to have banging around at the bottom of your pocket um so i think buck realized this i mean there were there was a long period of time where i was saying if they just figured out a way to put a clip on this i would wear it uh, i would carry it because it is so classic and beautiful and it does have that incredible uh clip point just got a beautiful iconic clip point shape so anyway 
Buck heard the call and, you know, they've been making lightweight versions for a long time. Actually, they they've made the plastic injection molded one for 20 bucks for a long time. And that thing is so cheap. It is so cheap, but it works. Um, but these are a much nicer way of getting a 110. Now, this first one is the Hunter Sport, a handsome, handsome uh, version of the 110. Look at this. You keep, you're keeping the bolsters, and you're keeping all of the same layout, including the blade shape, by the way. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, but it is those bolsters and liners are aluminum, and that's micarta. And so it's a much lighter package. This one is four and a half ounces. So the first, the, the regular buck 110 is seven and a quarter. This one is four and a half. So substantial, substantial uh, diet on this knife. Uh, of course, you can see that it's got a deep carry pocket clip. Very nice with the flush screws and a very well-placed uh, thumb stud. Well placed, meaning that's exactly where I keep it on my one twelve with the uh, with those uh, add-on uh, pocket clips or, or uh, thumb studs. So this has S thirty V blade steel. It's got still has that same perfectly beautiful clip point with the swooping uh, front and the deep hollow grind, but it is S thirty V with the Paul Boss heat treat. And so this is a fully modernized version of this and uh, i really really like this knife um i think i would carry this knife i like how it's i like the way the action feels with the with the thumb stud it's it's like it gives you resistance uh to here and then it breaks and it just snaps open with authority um, feels great in hand and we all know that s30v is a great steel and we all know that paul boss knows how to heat treat so so this thing is the jam now the third version here is the lightest this one is called the slim pro the buck 110 slim pro and here we see some changes that i don't like i don't know why they changed the blade the handle i'm totally fine with no bolsters totally fine with uh linerless micarta handle scales but the blade shape changed look at the, the blade is now uh, sort of a straight back clip and you're you're not really getting a change in performance, I would imagine. I haven't used either of these because they're not mine. But uh, you are getting a change in the aesthetic, and it's changing that classic Buck 110, making it a longer clip and making it a straight clip. And I don't understand. Uh, but let's see how light this one is. Yeah, two and, two and seven eighths inches. So you go from seven and a quarter to two and seven eighths. That's unreal i mean that is such a, a radical weight savings um all they needed to do to win my heart with this one is not put on that goofy anvil clip and just put on this clip so i think this model came out first but i like this more plain clip and then keep the blade shape the same in my book they're both they're both good looking and they're both going to work great but uh, to just to keep hold on to that classic 110 because it is the uh, the outer contours of the handle and the outer contours of the blade that make it so iconic, you know, when you look at it. And I'm not one like MTV who throws around the word iconic, like everything's iconic and everything's epic. But let's face it, the Buck 110, you might want to get it in your life, but you might not want to carry a boat anchor in your pocket. So um, do check out some of these. Uh, if you're interested, check out some of these uh, other Buck 110 options. Ketmuk Nessart, thank you so much, sir, for exposing me to these. Uh, I really, really like them, um, and they do make it a um, a doable option for the 110. All right. That being said, let's get to uh, let's get to some Knife Life news. But before we get there, I just want to I just want to plug Patreon because Patreon has really. Um, the money we get from Patreon and the support has really helped, uh, especially recently in, in outfitting this room a little bit better and um, getting getting some resources available to make the show better. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you one and all uh, for for joining us. And um, well, please scan the QR code on screen or go to the knife junkie slash Patreon to check us out uh, again. That's the knifejunkie.com 
slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the new Benchmade Limited Edition Titanium Bailout is available now while supplies last. The handle is solid titanium and houses a blade of CPMM 4 Super Steel in Cobalt Black Cerakote, and the knife is accented by Crater Blue Thumb Studs and Backspacer. The Fox River 2 LT extends Bark River's elegant hunting knife with a 5.25-inch blade of CPM 3V. Plus, newly available handle selections are up for grabs and the RMJ Tactical Kukri features the aggressive angle of the Kukri with the build quality of RMJ. This chopping blade is made from 0.270-inch thick 80 CRV2 tool steel and has a handle profile and texture that offer plenty of grip. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Knives Ship Free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Man, Knives Ship Free. That's always my, my favorite downtime part of this show is watching that Knives Ship Free. Uh, you got you to gotta go to TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Knives Ship Free and check out. They always have the newest, coolest stuff. And uh, you want to you wanna get that, that RMJ Kukri? Oh, my gosh. That is beautiful. Anyway, uh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I'm going to stop right there because um, every time Jim runs that liner, I come back in and I'm like, oh, did you see that? All right. So RMJ Kukri looks very cool. But let's talk about something else that looks really cool and this is coming from demco knives demco knives you know that they put out their um free reign line of sort of affordable fixed blade knives that look very demco um last year this year they're coming out with a new line that has me so excited and i had a chance to preview them at blade show and it's called the armager series now the armager series comes in armager 4 and armager 2 and those designations um point to the to the blade size uh the the first line the one that's got me super excited is this one the armature four series they have these uh this style handle full tang i like it with the double quillions three blade styles uh in 80 crv2 which is a great steel you get clip point like the one you see there you get tanto and you get spear point and the one that I will be getting is the spear point because it's bayonet ground and it's sharpened on uh, the first third of the top side too. So just very nice. That's not something we see often, uh, especially standard. So it's got a, a semi double edge on that one. Uh, they all come in serrated and unserrated versions. And yes, that semi double edged spear point is serrated on the, the full, full edge. And then that secondary edge, uh, and then there's the Tonto and the Clip, and those are serrated as well. So basically six knives in the four-inch line. And then they do a two-inch line. And the two-inch line is not in 80 CRV. It's in a more budget steel, but a proven budget steel, 4034. That's a blade, uh, steel we've seen cold steel use a lot. My, uh, my big Laredo Bowie is out of 4034 steel. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing to write home about, but it's no slouch either. It's a modern steel so this two inch line look at that little guy that's a shark's foot the the uh, ugly but charming um sheep foot design from uh demco knives and uh i say it's ugly i i i i love to hate it it's sort of like et um but anyway uh you can get this or a clip point little two inch twenty dollar two inch knife uh these are made in taiwan you know that the demco brothers have some heavy connections over there in Taiwan and know how to get a, an amazing knife produced over there. Uh, I do like their sheaths on all of their fixed blades, the way they're kind of uh, anonymously squared off and they put uh, the signature on there, that Demco signature. I think it looks cool. These are available now at the Demco website. Uh, go check those out. Uh, really exciting um, addition to their lineup. I love seeing what they're doing post cold steel. Uh, Benchmade. You saw in the Knife Ship Freeliner there, Benchmade now has their um, bailout, a sort of tactical, slight up, not upgrade, but a, 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 an upsized tactical version of the bug out. Uh, so you get the, you get that traditional bailout, but now in titanium. So it used to be, not used to be, but the original 
um, bailout is the contoured, checkered, uh, anodized aluminum. Beautiful. But this is flat slab blasted titanium, which is also beautiful. I do not have this knife, but I've always admired it from afar because I do know how awesome the bug out is. Uh, and this just seems to me like this is bench made at its best not necessarily this titanium version but uh, when they do things a little bit differently it seems to me like their entire product line is the same except for some exceptions and i don't know this is one of them to me uh, the tie replaces the aluminum but the m4 blade remains we all love m4 and Benchmade does M4 really well. And my experience with it was with my Contigo, which I unfortunately no longer have. Uh, being Cerakoted in a color they're calling Cobalt Black, which I love. I, we all know Cobalt Blue and how rich and beautiful Cobalt Blue is. So I guess imagine that with some black. Uh, and then the hardware is in something they're calling Crater Blue, which is kind of a proprietary um Benchmade color. Uh, they made a thousand of these and they're available now. If you're a Benchmade fan, I would jump on these. I don't think they're, they will last long. Um, if you miss out, I'm pretty sure you can get original goat scales and, and other aftermarket scales, but it's kind of cool to get the real deal right from the company. All right, next up, something else that's pretty cool uh, from a company that I absolutely love, Artisan. They have won my heart. Uh, over the past couple of years, but uh, Artisan has a new contest called Your Design, Our Creation. And yes, it's exactly what you might imagine. Uh, over the month of September, they had uh, uh, they were accepting designs for um, for production. And the winning design wins a design contract with Artisan Cutlery, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, they are now, they just uh, switched into the review phase and artisan cutlery will be reviewing and then they will be posting design you'll know, be they'll be calling through them i guess i should say and then they will be posting some of the top designs for feedback from the knife community so that's pretty exciting um you know artisan is is a, one of those companies that's pretty much on the cutting edge of modern modern folders especially in terms of production and design so um to me, it's a double benefit. You get them pouring over your design, and then if they choose it, then then they get knife junkies like you and me to look at them with all of our proclivities and preferences. And uh, and with with that combined feedback, they will be choosing the winner. The cool thing is, is even if you don't win, say you're second place, you still get your design made as a second place winner here, uh, because uh, and they'll do it in sort of lesser materials and sort of a, a lighter production. But it's just a great way to kind of give back to the community and uh, and to involve the community. And I got to say, a pretty savvy way for artisan cutlery to keep their eye on what their fandom and what their customers want, you know, by seeing what they're drawing out. Like this dude can't draw, but I can tell he wants finger choils, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, very exciting. I can't wait to see what uh, what they come out with. You know that uh, Tops Knives has done stuff like this with their employees, but I don't remember ever hearing of a customer design uh, contest. So very exciting. Okay, last up in Knife Life news, I want to talk about a new Wii knife that's coming out uh, from Kellen Bogardis. Now, Ke Kellen Bogardis is a newcomer pretty much, but not so new. And in 2020, in 2019, his very first design, which was produced by Wii, the large and beautiful 037. I, I really like that knife. Um, that one best, uh, most innovative design uh, at at Blade Show that year. I think it was 2019. Yes, 2019. And uh, so he's uh, got a follow up called the Zonda. He uh, posts a lot of his designs on his Instagram, and uh, this one definitely uh, got some traction. <clears throat> This is a big knife. This is what makes me excited. That blade there is uh, 20 CV, and it's a clip point harpoon of 4.05 inches. So a big boy there. And uh, a beautiful handle contoured with, um, with finger choils, and that back strap looks so comfortable. Uh, but it's got... so. It's got the limited edition finishings that we've been seeing a lot from Wii Knives, from like the Xiphius and, and some of their limited edition um, <clears throat> drops. But 
this is not limited edition. This is a regular production knife. So what I'm talking about is uh, you, if you can, uh, if you're looking at this uh, uh, handle right now, you can see the contoured handle slab, and then there is a and some sort of exotic carbon fiber. They're putting different carbon fibers and inlay materials there, and then there's a piece of titanium framing it over top. So it's a it's it's a more complex build. It's going to have more of a uh, a tactile feedback with that with that middle strap there and it's a complex kind of build for them to be doing for a non-limited release so this is kind of a cool way <clears throat> for a joe q public to get that sort of um exclusive we feeling but not have to be sitting at the keyboard hitting refresh uh, the moment it drops uh, only 4.17 uh, ounces which is pretty damn good for a 4.05 inch bladed knife with a hand rub finish, by the way. And these things are available now. So if you're a Wii fan or a budding uh, Bogardis fan, you might want to jump on this uh, as it happens. All right, people. Well, that's uh, all that's happening in Knives this week. Um, we will get to the state of the collection coming up where we're going to take a look at a new Civivi and a new Kaiser that um, I got to say, I'm really over the moon for. All right, let's take a look at the Knife Junkie podcast. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at the knifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So this first knife in the state of the collection, the Civivi Synergy 4, uh, was a knife that when we first made this design, I went bonkers, because I remember this Jim O. Young design from the early 2000s it was uh it was in aluminum and it had a sort of a eddie van halen guitar look on um, the anodization but that that overall profile was there uh and i always thought it was really cool um but it went away for a long time and then we and uh got together with jim o young and rehashed the design um the we synergy was a smaller and you know premium production and then they came out with this synergy three from Civivi, which was a small version of this knife. And now they have the Synergy 4, and I could not hold myself back. So that's a four-inch blade. It comes in a um, Tonto here or an upswept uh, drop point, or trailing point, <laughs> trailing point, upswept drop point. Yeah, uh, modified. And uh, you've got this incredible ergonomic handle. So you can see from looking at it that it's going to be comfortable uh, but in hand, it just melts. It melts in there because in cross section, it's contoured. And then it's got this radiating pattern of uh, concentric circles coming from the pivot. So the grip and the feel, just the texture feels good on the skin, or at least on my hands. And uh, you get a real positive grip there. But what do I love about this knife? Man, I love that Tonto blade. It reminds me a little bit of, um, well, it's that, it's that, it's a blend of the Japanese and the American Tonto uh, with the heavy facet up front, but the gentle sweep on the top. Um, you've got a belly there, and then you've got a point that is pretty much in line with the top of the pivot. So it's not such an inaccessible uh, tip when using it in draw cuts and that kind of thing. But to me, this is uh, you know this is tactical knife all day long. It it's just black as the day is long, sharp, long, thin. That blade is ridiculously thin and sharp. And uh, with that tanto, it's just I don't know, I don't know. It's just a tactical monster. Uh, I want to get the um, that sounded goofy, I know, but. But to me, it's like a, it, it really, e even if you're not living a tactical lifestyle, even if you're living a suburban dad lifestyle, but that is your aesthetic, man, it nails it. Uh, Tomas Alas has uh, one on his channel with the upswept, and it was a real hard decision for me, but 
uh, I, you know, I just kept coming back to the Tonto. Uh, but in his video, he makes the, uh, the upswept blade look very uh, appetizing. So uh, I might have to do that too. So really, really psyched to get this, uh, in this design in particular in my collection after years of admiring it in its various forms. And then next up, this one, Manaj. I love this. This is the Kaiser Mystic. Um, when this came out, this is a Paul Monko design. And uh, when this came out, I was smitten immediately. I saw that double-peaked uh, Bowie harpoon-style blade and, and how it marries up with that handle. Um, and the pommel uh, and the whole, the bolster lock, everything about it. I was immediately drawn to it aesthetically. And then I found out the story behind it called the mystic Paul Monko hails from Connecticut, mystic Connecticut, a maritime town, a whaling town. And uh, back in the day when the entire nation, the entire world ran on whale oil for a long time, people, everything we did included whale oil. So it wasn't just us being mean to our fellow mammals. Uh, it was an industry, serious, serious industry. And uh, this knife pays homage to that. And I love that. I, I I read Moby Dick a few years ago, and I say read, and I'm throwing it in air quotes because I listened to it online. I listened to the book on tape, so to speak, and had it read to me while I drove. And it was an amazing book that I knew I would never get through if I were to read it because I can't read for more than five minutes without falling asleep these days. It's just how it is. My only reading time is at night and then that's it. Uh, but, but this knife really captures that spirit. Uh, a, the harpoon blade. Yes. That the whole, uh, curve looks sort of, uh, whale like, and the materials, the, the combination, of the materials that green linen micarta next to the, this sort of blasted titanium. And then with a Rex 45 blade, that's the part I, I should have led with the blade is Rex 45, uh, which is has low chromium carbides in it, which which makes it patinaable. And you're like, yeah, but that's not the main thing about this blade, uh, about that blade steel, Bob. Rex 45 is incredibly hard. You can get this thing up to uh, 67 Rockwell, but it's not brittle. It maintains uh, a, a uh, astounding toughness for that for that hardness. And uh, and that's done by elim el eliminating the chromium carbides. Now, I'm no chemist, but I know that chromium is something that helps things, um, helps with corrosion resistance. So you, you reduce that to increase the toughness and it results in a blade steel that can patina. So I don't know if you can see this so far, but I've been cutting everything. Uh, I can see a little patina work in there if, if I move it in the light. Um, but I'll just keep cutting my meat with this for the next couple of weeks, get that nice patina on there. And then what I'm trying to say is then it will really, really embody that whaling spirit because it will have an, an old weathered looking blade uh, on the rest of this knife that already fits that theme. So I think the choice for Rex 45, never would have thought of it myself. I don't know. I don't really know Rex 45 from a hole in the wall, but now that I've read about it, uh, what a cool choice. And kind of a daring choice, I think, uh, but very, very cool choice on this knife. So I really look forward to seeing how this knife patinas and uh, how it grows. Paul, Mon Paul Monko is a really interesting young talent. Um, he first came out with the Kaiser Comet and then the Clairvoyant, which is also a large knife, more of a sheep's foot. And, and, and both of those were very tempting to me. But when this came out, there, I had no choice. It wasn't a matter of temptation. It was just, uh, I had no choice. I had to get it. Uh, so just a beautiful design. So excited to have this and carry it. Oh, and by the way, uh, yeah, it's just a ridiculous drop shut knife. I mean, it's got the action of like a Towser K. So just outrageously cool. All right, all that being said, this one kind of fits into the realm of where we're going here. Maybe it's slightly south of it, but I'm talking about large folders. Every once in a while, I'll do a large folder update. A couple of the knives in this uh, were in the last update. Well, one of them anyway, but it, it, it needs to be in this grouping here. Okay, first I'm going to start off with a Civivi, and this is the Civivi Cinesis. This is a knife... Uh, 
that I don't hear much about. Um, but it's a really nice looking clip point. With that clip point, uh, that's uh, 14C28N. And if you have bionic eyes, you can actually see the designation there. It's unreal how small they make the uh, they make that. So um, I appreciate that because I like the um, blank blade. But um, it is surprising that you don't hear much about this. And it could be because it's a steel frame lock, but it's so thin it 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 does not it's not extra heavy or anything like that. We've got incredible action. You've got a three point 75 inch clip point blade of 14 c 28 and it is blasted um i know a lot of people don't like that i didn't like it on my aus 8 cold steels because they would rust but i've had no problem with this it seems like the medium with which it's blasted is smaller so maybe those little pockets those micro pockets are smaller so it's harder to get moisture in there who knows but i love the shape of this clip point blade it it reminds me a lot of the waksahashi um fixed blade knife by Senkut. Uh, the budget brand of Civivi, uh, and it just works great. And you've got that forward finger choil, so you can come up, and this large blade can become a, a much more manageable uh, blade up in this position. Again, uh, steel, and you get a great, great action out of this. Inexpensive. This was 50 bucks on Amazon, and this uh, is a very nice... Um, burlap micarta burlap micarta is very very uh catches catch you know sometimes it's real crap and uh, you can see the you can see the fibers waving and all that the 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 uh, micarta there is very nice okay next up this one has been one that i've been carrying basically non-stop since i got it in one way or another um as an esk or as a main pocket that's the uh the large pyrite from cjrb uh, also a three, well, this is like a 3.8 inch blade. So getting very close to four inches, AR RPM nine blade steel. A cool thing about this blade is that it's the same thickness as the smaller pyrite, but it has a much more broad blade because it's scaled up. So it's like, you know, very, very, very thin behind the edge and very, very sharp. Um, I, I love this knife. It's got incredible action. If you like button locks, this is the one. This is my favorite button lock. Uh, though uh, the Mad Mad Tonto is a is a close second, and uh, and the Civivi um, the Civivi Sentinel Strike is is a very nice one. But this one is the best in my opinion. I like how they how they pocket out the um, the lock pocket here in using um instead of a cone shape it's a, a slotted 90 degree angle shape you get great cutting action it's nice and thin uh, you can if you squeeze really hard wait is this the one yeah if you squeeze really hard you can kind of get these to flex which when i first got it was a was a turnoff but it hasn't really come up in everyday use i, I never squeeze it that hard that i feel that it was more like let's see if i can squeeze this um so this I highly recommend, you know, if you if you get one knife out of this list. Well, that's kind of hard to say, but uh, if you get one knife out of this list and you got that one, you'd be you'd be happy uh, because it is nice and light, nice and thin, but big. Um, I like that a large blade that carries like a small blade. Next up, another uh, this this is one of two artisans in this list. I'm I'm really loving artisan these days. This one was a gift from my friend Dave. This old sword blade reviews uh, for my birthday. This is the Hyperion, the um, artisan Hyperion designed by uh, Dariel Castion of uh, D Rocket Designs. You got this beautiful clip point blade. That's four inches of s35 vn flat ground really nice and thin this knife is a, a wicked wicked cutter i've used the point uh a lot on this knife it's sharp you know sometimes i don't know sometimes blades they when they thicken up at the tip the tip is not as usable for fine tasks i'm not talking about draw cuts where you're putting pressure down and and carving or cutting like that i'm talking about you know, you can stick the tip of this into a very uh, loose and gauzy saran wrap, which which will bind up any lesser knife, and this will just glide right through it. 
Um, so you get a real, real wicked sharpness uh, with the geometry here. Uh, you've got a fuller, which is nicely polished. An, an interesting touch. It's like the highest polish on the blade is in that fuller. And yes, it is usable. And yeah, you can, you can uh, flip it out using the middle finger flick. It's got an overall with that with that uh, diving edge and the wider belly than Ricasso here. It's got a uh, Western feel to it. And then you look at the sort of uh, gun stock shape of the handle and that sort of completes it. Uh, this always to me looks like a uh, of a Brado bar on a guitar, like an older guitar, which is kind of cool. Bolster lock here. Very nice carbon fiber. This is a premium for sure. This is a premium um, artisan they do they do a wide range from you know the very premium to the very budget <clears throat> and i think they're starting to do a bit of oem work uh i i i'm not sure but rosecraft uses ar rpm 9 so i'm wondering if they're doing some of that some of their oeming uh, but this thing is just exquisite titanium s35 vn carbon fiber and four inches of really nice action all right next up is the other artisan in this grouping ordinarily i would have spread them out but i'm doing these by size today um and that is the artisan accelerator now this one is a mike snowdy design mike snowdy uh, a legend of the early tactical knife scene in the in the late 90s and early 2000s uh, he went quiet for a while. I think he was designing belts and finding Jesus and um, making changes. And then he's come back to knife making, at least on a larger scale. I don't know if he ever went away from it. Uh, but uh, I, I do must say I was surprised to see when um, when this collaboration came out because I reached out to him to come on the show uh, for an interview. And he was uh, a couple of years ago now. And he was like, eh, I'm kind of out of that game now. I'm doing belts and other things. I was like, OK. Um, so very cool to see him back. I, I've always thought his designs had panache and uh, uh, practicality, but with a huge tactical uh, bent to them. This harpoon shape is, I find very appealing. I ordinarily am not too huge into the harpoon uh, on the back of the blade, but to me, this one just does a beautiful job at it. And the design, the handle is very ergonomic. Um, it, it is a big... It does take up a bit of a footprint in the pocket. Probably uh, the second biggest footprint in this list, but uh, it's on bearings. And I love a non flipper on bearings, just a regular thumb stud or opening hole knife on bearings. Just makes it a, a very pleasing experience. Again, AR RPM 9 coated nicely and uh, wickedly sharp. Again, these are all very, very sharp. I called this wickedly sharp and I called the Hyperion wickedly sharp. So I, I, I have to amend that. The Hyperion is wickedly sharp. This is just badass sharp. Uh, you know, I, I, I need to make sure that these words mean something here. I mean, because for sure that Hyperion is way thinner and uh, way sharper. Uh, just through geometry. Okay, next up is the Synesis, which, or I mean, is the uh, Synergy, which I talked about before. I will just show it off briefly. Again, you've got that four inch blade and the difference between four inches and three and a quarter can be profound. I mean, look at the difference here. It's not, it's not much on paper, but, um, you know, when you're, when you're only dealing with, uh, in a range of uh, eight inches or so, or nine inches, every inch in there makes a difference every quarter inch and, and, uh, in, in all, all dimensions. So, um, yeah, if you like big knives, I'm not going to talk about this one since I just did, but if you like big knives, I would go for this one. It, it's got such, so when I got it first, I was not impressed with the action. Sure. It flipped out great, but it didn't close very well. And then I remembered just like with the Sentinel strike, all of these coated blades, they just need a little time to wear a race in that coating around the pivot. And this is, this is getting there. This is getting there. One gripe about this, I'm not crazy about the lock bar. I, I wouldn't mind a little more access there, uh, but other than that, and that's not a huge hang up for me. Awesome knife. 
All right, next up, this one uh, was an impulse buy, but one that I've wanted for a long time, and it's the SR1 Lite. It was an impulse buy because it's a mere 36 bucks, uh, but it's a big four-inch Tonto blade, and uh, we were talking geometry before and how thin this cuts. Well, this is a wedge, and it also cuts incredibly. I mean, you know, if you put a nice enough relief edge on there, you're gonna, you can get anything to cut, and this is really sharp but really robust that blade steel is why this knife is 36 bucks that's 8 cr13 mov uh, but we know cold steel and their heat treatments and they really maximize the steel and get the most out of it um, i have uh, several kind of uh, light models uh, with 8 cr13 mov and uh, like the um, the luzon has 8 cr and i've used that more than most of my cold steels uh, because it's a kitchen. Uh, it's in the kitchen and it gets used to break down boxes uh, a lot of time. So uh, it gets a lot of use and that 8CR is awesome. They do an awesome job with it. So don't look down your nose at that steel necessarily. Look at who's heat treating it, who's making it. Um, so you've got the full thickness of that blade coming through the lock. You've got the very large uh, stop pin here uh, that makes the access lock the access lock and not just a back lock. So, so I mean, not access, I'm sorry, guys, triad. So you see that back lock spring there and the blade pinch a giant stop bar there that transfers all of the energy into the rest of the frame of the handle instead of into the lock if it's receiving stress. That's what makes the triad lock so strong plus the the pocket dug into the, or the pocket cut into the back of the tang um, allows for ever deeper nestling with wear so a great knife uh, an awesome knife to keep in your car to keep in your bag uh, it's not going to break your heart or break the bank if you lose it but you can use it uh, so i would i would definitely recommend the sr1 light um, and then if you like the knife and you want to spend the extra money, you can get it in S35 VN and green uh, G10. But for my usage, it's not necessary. Next up, oh my goodness. This seems like highway robbery uh, that you can get this knife for 30 bucks on uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This is a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive with... Um, Beyond EDC. This is the Dirk Pinkerton designed uh, modern Navaja called the Night Horse. Um, this is the great and powerful Dirk Pinkerton's take on the great and powerful Navaja, one of the one of the most incredible and and uh, memorable folding knives from history. This is uh, the knife that was used when Spaniards, the common Spaniard, was no longer allowed to walk around with a sword on his hip and. Uh, to to settle differences, they started carrying navajas, these big, giant locking folders, bigger than this. They would tuck in their cummerbunds and uh, pull out, open up, and then if you're holding it way back here, you got something, you know, approximating a short sword. If you've got a, a big one like the uh, like the Espada XL, but this to me is just a really graceful modern interpretation of the lines. You've got that Spanish clip point with a long flat clip, uh, almost a flat back here, but with a dip. And then the, um, the downward plunging edge till it, it reaches that belly and heads straight up towards the point. I love Spanish clip point blades. Uh, if you're a fan of them, you can check out Miguel Barbudo on Instagram. Um, he... He does some incredible, incredible. He's a Spaniard who makes Spanish knives, and you will see shapes like this pop up in his work. Um, Dirk Pinkerton, to me, is one of the best modern designers who interprets classic, um, classic blade designs in modern folders. I'd say him and Demko and and uh, and Lynn Thompson are the are the kings of taking classics and modernizing them. And I just love this knife so much. It's 14C28, and you can see how it just drops shut. You've got three different flavors, three different colors of G10. You can get green, this uh, this tan or black. Um, really nice pocket clip, carries really well, incredible action, no blade play, 30 damn dollars. Uh, on Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, it's amazing to me. I don't know how they manage that. Uh, 
I'm sure we all have our theories, but you can also get this in a in a titanium and S35 version, S35 EN version for 185 bucks. So if this is not your thing, but you like that design and you want to go all out, you can get that. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, if you like big knives and you just need a big knife fix of something absolutely beautiful and wicked sharp, by the way, I mean, it's a great knife. Uh, check out the Night Horse on Smoky Mountain Knife Works uh, from Pinkerton and uh, Beyond EDC. Next up, one that you've seen here before, um, but they just re released a new version of this, so I thought I'd put it on this list. This is the Max Ace Sandstorm, in this case, K. The Sandstorm is a titanium bladed knife with this, uh, or, uh, not bladed, I'm sorry, a titanium frame lock knife uh, from uh, the premium line of Max Ace. And as they are wont to do, they put out a G10 and K110 version. K110 is analogous to D2 uh, with a four and a half inch blade. So man alive, is that a nice big blade. K110. Um, oh, and then you got it on this on this large handle with astounding action. Uh, that big heavy blade does help in um, in with the action. Of course, you get some centrifugal force there. These, I thought, originally were going to be blade stops when I was looking at it online. They're not blade stops. They're just giant, cool thumb studs. There's your, your stop bar. Um, open construction, really heavy. Uh, not heavy, but heavily built, sturdily built. So you got to check out their new version of the Sandstorm. It's got a sculpted handle. It's got a different kind of a recurve uh, before the a recurve in the blade. It's got a big pocket in the blade, and it looks amazing. Um, but, of course, it's not the K110 version. It's the higher-end version. So it'll run you a pretty penny. Uh, but if you like big knives, you, you must go check it out. Max Ace, they have a lot of big knives, and they're all so cool and really well made. And and many of them are just like say five to seven years out of my interest range. In other words, five to seven years ago, some of these really big, heavily sculpted Max Ace knives, I'd be saving and scrimping to get. But my tastes have simplified a little bit. Um, so that's the Max Ace K110. Um, penultimate knife here i'm going to use my right hand oh i did it under the camera <laughs> is the lucha from uh kershaw and their and their lucha line they have um this in black wash now they have it with a uh, spear point blade they have a, a couple of variations of this but a uh, really nice um skeletonized handles with the with the um ball bearings and the pivots this is my first and only like really, I, here, I'm going to do this over here. This is my first and really only nice um, Bally song. I have a Baron Sons that's nice. And I have a bunch of, a couple of old uh, martial arts store specials uh, that are just really cheap. But this is the, this is the only one I have that doesn't have blade play and that has bearings in the pivot. And I see why uh, the, the Bally boys uh, would like that. Um, now I'm just doing, I had, I know three ways to open a Bally song and none of them are for glory. <laughs> they're, they're for opening and, and using, you know, to having it open quickly as possible or having the, the other side of the handle be used as a percussive tool too, on the way to, um, you know, fighting or whatever. Uh, at least that's the daydream. Um, I am not interested in the aerobatics uh, that you see the, the guys at Blade Show do. It's cool. It's accomplished. I'd rather see kids playing with knives than hacky sacks, even though I used to do that. Um, I think it's cooler that they're playing with these, but it's a very emo. I was surprised. And I'm not, I'm not, it's just a different subculture of knife there. Um, but whether you do that, whether you, um, flip a knife for fun and aerobatics and try and figure out new tricks, uh, or you carry it to use it and carry it, uh, as a self-defense thing, I would say that the, the Kershaw Lucha series is a great way, uh, great way to do it because they have the, the traditional dimensions with the four and a half inch blade. And so it's nice and big and that's probably a good thing when you're when you're flipping, um, but also it's not going to break the bank. All right, last up, 
this is a cool one. Uh, this is the Dagger Vendetta. And Dagger, with, with two R's, has been producing really cool stuff out of Russia for, I would, I would say, the last eight years that I've been aware of them. And this shape, this Vendetta, uh, this Vendetta blade is sort of the, the signature shape, uh, the first shape I saw from them in, in all different sizes, this Vendetta. And it's really cool. It, it plays a little bit on the, on the traditional switchblade, but, but it also, it's more of a dagger. I guess the reason I say traditional slip uh, switchblade is Vendetta is an Italian word for, um, you know, getting vengeance basically and uh or or a vengeance pact you have and of course we think of doing vengeance when we say vendetta with an italian stiletto switchblade so that's why this makes me think of that but when you look at it, it doesn't look a thing like an italian stiletto uh, after all a uh, goofy skull blade uh skull clip that is a, a non-starter for me i hate the clip uh you've got a glass breaker here uh, a steel frame lock with a very short um, lock bar, which makes it not so not as easy to open, in my in my opinion, or to close. Uh, secondary lock there. Good flipping action. I won't say awesome, but good flipping action, um, and a really nice D2 blade. I mean, this blade is very sharp, and of course, you can see it's got that dagger vibe. So it's going to be a great thruster with that big top wedge, and um, and I and it'll be a good slasher, but it, just overall a pretty nice large knife um, with what is the yeah five inches. That's a five inch blade. So you will notice a dearth of XL cold steels. That's not what this lineup is about. This is about your more uh, um, your more pedestrian, uh, less weapony um, large four inch blades here. So do you like four inch blades? Do you like, do you like large folders? Let me know, drop a uh, comment in the uh, comment down below and let me know what your favorite large folders is, are. And yes, I know you like the Cold Steel XLs. I do too. I've got a huge, huge collection of them. Uh, but let me know what knives you like besides those. You can even include something like the SR1, a Cold Steel that is not one of those XLs. Um, but I'd be interested in your take. All right. Well, thanks for joining me on this uh uh, supplemental edition of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, join us again on Sunday for a great interview show on on Thursday for Thursday Night Knives and uh, where we do it live right here, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Facebook, and, and Twitch. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.